Hello everyone and welcome back to another Brad Teachers video. Today we're going over what may be one of the most important section of snap blocks, the control section. As you can tell there by the yellow sort of blocks there on the left, we are going to look at the ability to change what's happening in your program as it's running, which is by far one of the most important things we can do in programming. Uh, here you can see we're starting with a section of blocks that are all sort of called hat blocks and they all have the little round part on the top. And what they do is they allow you to actually start a section of code. So normally maybe we're clicking our sprites uh, command blocks just like that. But normally when you're running your, your game or your program just through the green flag right here or someone else is running it without seeing the code, these blocks right here, these hat blocks, allow us to actually start sections of code based off conditions. Here you can see I have a command block called spiral and it is a custom block using a section of scripts that you've seen in my earlier videos. So I'm simply setting a pen and then having my sprite right here go in this loop so that you can see this very visual demonstration. So if I click spiral, you can see it clears it and starts new just like that. Here I'm gonna set it under my when green flag is clicked, which is the most common way to start your sprite programs. In fact, if you're a user, it's the only way to start them. So here, anytime that is clicked, you can see it's starting a spiral. Now, if I move it down and I clear and I click start now, it no longer kicks off that script. Let's go ahead and put our spiral underneath this right here, which is when our any key is pressed. Here, if I click it, you can see it goes, but what happens if I do that? Nothing, but then if I'm clicking some buttons, maybe you can hear my keyboard, maybe you can't, but regardless, I hit any button on the keyboard and it's gonna start that script. Here, I'm also gonna move down to when I am blank. So this is the sprite and it's checking for each one of these different conditions. So here, if I change uh, this to clicked, and you can see I click my sprite, it is going to trigger that code. However, if I move it to maybe mouse entered and I move my mouse onto that sprite, it goes ahead and draws my shape for me. Finally, we also have the when a condition is true. So here I'm going to make, let's say, a um, sensing variable, and I'm going to see if the mouse is down. So mouse down is checking to see if my mouse on the screen is down, and let's see if I can change it, I can't. Here, if I put mouse down as a value, and I put spiral right there, and I click, you can see it draws. But it, of course, it only draws when I click down. If I move that, now it's not gonna do anything. Our next control block also allows us to start the script. This time, it requires us to broadcast from different sprites. So this next series right here all controls our broadcasting uh, ability. And what that means is we can control our sprites from other sprites. So I'm gonna move this broadcast block right here over to the sprite number two. And I'm going to set my original sprite up so that when it receives a new message, which I'm going to call spiral, it's going to spiral. So let's go ahead and get rid of broadcast right here. And on our broadcast block, we are going to select spiral. And you can see that now when I click from my green sprite number two that sits right here, our other sprite goes ahead and creates a spiral. And of course, our other block right here simply allows us to cast spiral and then wait. So let's say I cast spiral and then I say, hmm, for two seconds. Right there, you can see that hmm waits for the spiral to be completely finished, which allows us to a little bit easier, more easily control the flow of our program. Beyond the broadcast and receiving broadcast functions, I have a series of functions over here that allow us to control the flow of our program or allow us to do things uh, multiple times. So here I'll start with a lesser used but still important block called warp. Uh, as you can see, if I click spiral on the right hand side, it completes the sprite, it completes the script. Uh, it doesn't take too long, but it does have a little bit of a delay while it processes. If I put spiral inside of the warp function and I clear, you can see it completes it nearly instantaneously. So it pretty much cuts through to the very end of that script and completes it. Uh, I also have the ability to wait. So let's say I wanted to do a spiral, but I wanted to make it a little bit longer. Here, I can move this to the side. 
I can put the wait one second inside that script, click OK, and now the spiral is going to take a lot longer because as it draws each side of our spiral, it's going to wait a complete second. Let's go ahead and remove that so we're not waiting too long for the rest of the video. Click OK, and then we'll move this and make sure our script works properly and we're all set. We also have the ability to wait until a condition is satisfied, which I've showed you before. So we could kind of, you know, pause our script's execution maybe while the mouse is down or let it continue while the mouse is up. I have a few of these forever functions, repeat, repeat until, and for i equals one to 10. These are ones that you're gonna be using in your scripts all the time. They're very important to start mastering and figuring out now. We have the forever loop, which we'll start with. The forever loop is very useful if you have a script that you wanna run while the user is doing something. It's going to allow you to capture input pretty much the entire time. So here I have forever, and it's just gonna continue that spiral on and on and on until I click stop, or until it is implicitly stopped. Here I can also repeat something a particular number of times, uh, which is actually how I even have my spiral script set up in the first place. So if I bring the block editor, you can see I do a lot of work to set up where my script starts, sort of the distance where the sprite's going to start. And then I repeat 28 times, moving my pen in a particular direction, rotating and decreasing the length that I move. So let's go ahead and click OK. Of course, I can do this uh, even outside of that original block. So what if I only want the spiral to do to be drawn twice? You can see it is complete right there and then repeat until, like we've seen with all of our blocks, repeats until a certain condition is met. Here, I'll go to sensing. I'll say repeat until the mouse is down. The mouse down is a condition that's going to check and see if my mouse is clicked. So you can see that will stop when my mouse is clicked right there. So beyond that, we have several others, including the four i equals one to 10. This will just do a count and then complete our script. So let me go back to motion, bring my spiral back out. This is sort of the same, but instead of doing a certain amount, you can also draw down the i variable right here. And that's what makes the four i equals one to 10. So powerful is that I can check the i variable right here. And that can help me control some part of my script's execution. For the last section of our if statement blocks that I'm gonna show on this first look at our control box walkthrough, I've started by showing a new spiral function that I built that instead of uh, drawing in a square, draws in a uh, triangle just like this. Here I have the first of our if statements drawn out and this if statement is going to execute something if it matches a condition. Here, I'll go to my operators. This diamond shaped Boolean operator will check if two things are true. And if it is, it will flag that control statement. So I'm gonna to go to variables. I'm going to draw out var one. And I'm going to say if var one equals the number one, then I am going to do this new spiral. So here, if I click, you can see var one is set to Brad, var two is equal to one. And since it is not, it is not executing any new code. So let's go ahead and show that one more time. If however, I set my if var one is equal to Brad, I then now draw that triangle right here in the center. We also have the if then else block right here, which will execute uh, even if the opposite is true. And let's go ahead and show what that means here. I'm going to take my spiral two and I'm going to leave that as the primary if condition that we're setting to true. And then I am also going to take my original spiral and set it in, in the else. So if something is true, it's going to get triggered in this first statement. That is what our sprite is checking. And if it is not true, if it is false, so if it is anything else than the condition we set, it's going to execute my normal spiral. So here, let's go ahead and draw the set var one is equal to Brad and let's set our condition. So right now, since this is true, we should see the second triangle spiral being triggered. And you can see that happens just like this. And we have that right here. However, if I set my variable to the number one instead, which it's gonna change, we will now draw the square. But of course, if neither of these are true, I'll still do my second condition and it will be else. Finally, 
I have a reporter block that does very similar to what these two do right here. So let's say we have our variable up here. I'm gonna say, let's set our variable to this. I'm gonna set it to var2, and actually I do need this as well. So let's have var1 be equal to my name once again. So right now I want to say if var is equal to my name, then I'm gonna set var2 equal to something else. So here I will say, uh, if var1 is equal to Brad, then we are going to set var2 equal to one. And if it is not equal to Brad, we're gonna set it to two. So here, if I click, you can see var1 is now one, just as we should expect because var1 is Brad. However, if I change that to you know the number 29 and I click this and I click this again, it is now going to set var2 equal to two. So thank you very much for joining me. This was just the basics of the control block. I wanted to cover uh, all the control blocks that are going to be used on a much more frequent basis. The rest of our control blocks are a little bit more complicated and I'll cover them in a further video. I hope to see you for the rest of my snap block walkthrough. Thank you very much.